What is going on YouTube? Another video coming at you from JD's Nerdverse. Welcome back. Go ahead and watch this battle. It's Nidoran Male facing off against Squirtle. Um, that's who we're playing with today. Before I get started, please hit the subscribe button, notification bell, get videos like this all the time, and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Um, we're playing through with Nidoran Male, Nidorino, and Nino King. So we just edge out of victory here, and we're also in the fast level groups. So that's very good. Um, so I'm going to go over a little bit about it. The uh, rules of the playthrough first. Uh, first rule is it's a, it's a running clock. Um, I'll only pause that for three situations. Um, a Lieutenant Surge Gem, if I'm unloading stuff into a computer and I don't want to rush myself. And actually in this video, I did rush myself and didn't stop the clock. So this is the reason why I have this rule. Um, you'll see it. And um, also, if I need to get like Hyper Beam or something and I have to go through some extreme measures to get a, a TM that's like way out of the way or I have to sell a lot of coins, I'll pause it for that. But I don't do that in this video. So... Um, yeah, and the other rule is I got to play through with Nidoran, uh, Nidorino, uh, Nid Nid one of the Nidoran lines, Nidoran Male, Nidorino, Nidor King. So my Pokemon I can use in battle. I can use other Pokemon for TMs and things outside of battle. I can only use him in battle. So Nidoran Male. So Nidoran Male. I'm going to compare this a lot to Nidor Nidoran Female. So Nidoran Female was not a bad playthrough. It's right on the top tier, right up there with Charizard, um, Blastoise, and uh, Stand Slash. So right on par with them. Um, and but the problem was early she had some issues so I'm gonna go over stats real quick and I'll explain what the issues she had compared to Nidor Nidoran male um, stats first uh, Nidoran male has decent speed and decent attack early um, the speed and attack gets better and then later in the game the speed and attack are attack is way higher and the speed is way higher than Nidoran females ever was Nidoran female did have better defense and a little bit better HP but the attack and speed is better for Nido King. Nido King. What's also better for Nido King is its level up moveset. So the level up moveset that Nido King can have is it gets Horn Attack at level eight. That is a massive advantage over Nido Queen because that Nido well, Horn Attack can do a lot more damage than Tackle, Scratch, or Poison Sting will ever do. Um, so and then obviously you got the you got the um, it's the same exact moveset as Nido Queen when it comes to TMs. Mega Punch, Mega Kick, uh, Horn Drill, Body Slam, uh, Bubble Beam, Water Gun, Ice Beam, Blizzard, Hyper Beam. Uh, if we did counter and submission, there'd be good ones. Uh, Seismic Toss, Thunderbolt, Thunder, Earthquake, Fissure, and obviously Fire Blast and Rock Slide. So all, all those moves can be utilized um, to give Nitto, Nitoran, Nitorino, and Nitto King advantages in this playthrough. So... So what do I got to say about this playthrough? Well, you're going to see this is it's, the time at the end. I'm not going to ruin it, but it's a very solid time, not to say the least, if not the best time that we've done so far. So here's our rival battle. Um, we have Horn Attack. So if you saw the rival battle with our last, the last one, we were at a little bit higher level, actually level 13. Whereas with this one, we're only at level 12. But we do have Horn Attack. It is a much more effective move than Scratch or Tackle. So that is where this run has like a drastic advantage. It also is advantage in time because we didn't have to level up to level 20 or take a lot of time to like just you know, get to that point. We get through the gym and uh, we get through Brock's gym and now we're having some issues. We're not getting attacks off. Stupid dirty bird Pidgey. Um, so now we're in Brock's gym and we're fighting his million light years trainer. Um, we're fighting Diglett. I think this is a one shot or it's a, it's a two hit. Yeah, it's a two hit. Okay. So, um, level 13 is where we're at now. Um, we get to, I, <clears throat> I'm pretty confident I've seen it to where you had to get to like a level. I, I wanted to make the battle consistent. So what I did is I just got, I just leveled up Nidoran male to Nidorino to make the battle consistent. So if you look at the time, we were at about 25 minutes before we got back past Brock's gym. And again, Brock is doing the Wakanda for life, uh, Wakanda forever. Um, and we just, the same rules apply. Geodude, just you know, get past the first, uh, first, uh, get past Geodude, and then get to Onyx as quickly as possible. And here's another advantage that Nidorino has over Nido, Nido, or Nidoran. Nidoran only has Growl, does not have Leer. Leer lowers the defense of the opposing Pokemon, so that whenever we're playing the uh, the Bide game, where he uses Bide and we use our non-attacking move to lower whatever it is, and in this case, it lowers his defense. So it's perfectly timed. It's perfectly like angled or whatever. It's the perfect move to have while you're trying to stall out and win this win this battle. 
Leer lowers your defense, and if you do it so many times, it doesn't have an effect, but it just makes our, our attack that much better. So at 11 minutes and 35 seconds, we beat him in Wakanda for life. Wakanda forever um, by Brock. So we are moving on to the game at a 10 minutes ten minutes faster than our rival, or our, our um, uh, Nidoran female. Nidorino is, is very solid in itself, but Nido King gets even better. So where Nido King and Nido Queen have some differences, Nido Queen, when it levels up, she gets a uh, move called move body slam. She gets it whenever you evolve her. Um, it doesn't matter what level we are, just you get evolve her. Um, Nitto King doesn't get anything, but he does get a move called Thrash that we can use a little bit later in the game. So there's some trade offs that you're getting with each one. Uh, but the biggest trade off is the fact that you're a lot faster with Nitto King, so you don't have you don't have to worry about being outsped. Um, you also have a higher attack, so when you get the Nitto Queen, your attack goes up. And obviously, the same the same will apply with Nido Queen. You have a very, very broad move set, so that's not an advantage at all. You don't have a di the only di thing different is really Thrash. Um, and in early in the game, you have um, um, Horn Attack. So these these trainers are very trivial. Um, even though we're a lower level than we did with Nido Queen or Nido Arena, I should say, um, these battles are trivial. There's nothing here that can do a lot of damage to us. We're poison. Uh, well, I think we're just normal right now, actually, or we're just poison. And um, the, our attack, Horn Attack, is just a much more powerful move than Scratch or Tackle. So we're getting these done in one hit without having to take a lot more damage. So some other things that with this Pokemon is we're in the fast level group, which is good. Um, the fast level group makes it so we can level up, we can get experience, and it not take us forever to do everything. Um, Nitto, Nitorin, a female, was in the same group. But like, so Sand Slash, to get, like, you have to fight a couple extra battles to get um, to level up your Pokemon. That's kind of the nice thing about Nidoran male and female. So we're beating all these trainers here, and we're just really just buying time. We're buying our time until we can get to Mount Moon. Mount Moon is whenever this game opens up, opens wide up. So right here we're getting Water Gun, and I didn't do this with Nido Queen um, or Nidorina female. Um, Nidoran female, but I didn't, I forgot that I can just add water gun without having to wait for anything. <laughs> it's just a stupid thing on my part, but I just didn't add water gun right away. So, um, I could have just done that and maybe possibly made this attack a little bit, or battle a little bit easier on me. Um, well, like I said, not, not the biggest deal in the world. It's not a huge deal. Uh, but I mean, it's just a little bit of, uh, <laughs> mental lapse there, I guess is the best way to put it. So, like I said, these trainers are kind of trivial, but I, what I also know is that when I face Misty, Misty is water type, and we're going to be ground poison whenever we level, we evolve. So, being not a ground type would be great, but we're going to be a ground type. That's just the way the game is. So, that makes us a little bit weak to her, uh, her water type. It makes us weak to water type. So, I'm trying to get a couple extra levels to potentially win this battle um, against her. And we're fighting these trainers here. We're not ground type yet, so we have an advantage here. She can't really hurt us. So now we get the Moonstone. Now we evolved into Nitto Queen. Or Nitto King, I'm sorry. Nitto King. Get Nitto King. Now we can teach Mega Punch. If we do. Okay, there we go. So now we have a move set, and this is where, like I say, a lot of roll, a lot of playthroughs snowball. Now we have Horn Attack, Water Gun, Poison Sting, and Leer. Um, very solid playthrough amount of moves, and the ne the next couple of fights is they're not very hard at all. Um, our attacks way better as long as we get an attack off, they're gonna be one hits. We're not super over leveled as much as we were with the Nitto with the Nitto Queen, but these battles are like I said, they're not very difficult because of just where we're at. We have a third, we have a fully evolved Pokemon, third stage is fully evolved, fully evolved Pokemon like uh, second evolution. Um, at level 22, 20 minutes into this game. Um, it's real time. It's probably about an hour in the game or an hour and some minutes. Um, and now we learn thrash at level 23. So, yep, we're going to get thrash. Thrash is great, but there's some trade off bad side downsides to it. If in hindsight, I, I, you know, there might be a better thing to do all hell to do in fossil. So now we're going to Misty's Gym. I'm going to show you everything that happened. So what I've started doing with my videos, if you've noticed, the time on this is about 40 minutes, and I've been having 58 minutes and hour-long videos. I've cut out stuff that's not important and showed the more important stuff, and I'm even showing some losses now. So you can see where struggles happen, 
and why being decisive is, is saves time rather than trying to like finagle the battle and keep going and keep going. So, Mega Punch, uh, we get confused. That's awesome. And Mega Punch knocks it out. So right here, you're gonna see the first Misty battle. I think I'm pretty confident I put it in here. So I went out and healed just to be safe. And I came back and I'm at level 23. Thrash, it knocks out Star You. That's not an issue. Star Me outspeeds. So that was a downside to Star Me going first. And then she two hits me with Bubble Beam. That's not good. So now I go back, I restart that, and I'm going to try and fight her again. So now we're going to see if we can do this again. And then we got in. Mega Punch is not a one-hit knockout, so now we're taking damage from Staryu, so that's not going to work. And then obviously Horn Attack not gonna, is not as powerful as those other two moves. So we get a little bit of a uh, green light right there by her doing X Defend, but she gets a one-hit knockout. Well, one one of the hits was came from. So we're just not going to fight her right now. So we're going to skip it and go ahead to our rival. It's kind of a... Either way, it doesn't really matter. The only thing that would matter is it does give us Bubble Beam, which might help us in the rival fight. But we have Water Gun. Um... So we don't really, really need um, Water Gun at this moment. We still have, or I'm sorry, Bubble Beam. We have Water Gun to fight the two Rock Trainers we fight later, the Hikers. So that's really what the benefit would be. And I have enough moves to compensate for not having Bubble Beam right now. So right now we're confusing ourselves, and this is one of the trade-offs to using Thrash, is that you can confuse yourself. If, if it didn't confuse you, it would be amazing. And I thought for a second I was about to lose this battle. I really did. The Mega Punch is a two-hit. Water gun doesn't knock me out. We get the knockout, thank goodness. Uh, that was very frustrating. So now we fight all the trainers on Nugget Bridge. Nugget Bridge, as with every playthrough I've done so far, is not very difficult. Um, you just got to have enough power points to get through. And really, what the, the, the that's the crux of any playthrough right now is: do you have enough power points to get through certain parts of the game without going back and healing? And at this point, in, in as much as I've played this game and I've kind of just um, gotten to a point where I'm like, you know what? We can get through certain parts. We don't have to go back and heal. We can use a potion. There's enough moves. And that's not the case with everyone. There's definitely some Pokemon coming up that that's not going to be the case. We're not going to have enough moves. We're not going to have enough power points. we got to go back and heal. Uh, to be honest, though, since our first Pokemon, there's not too many Pokemon I have that have had to go back and heal multiple times. Um maybe Butterfree, but like since Bulbasaur, Bulbasaur was one of the few that had to, and the reason why Bulbasaur had to is because it just had Vine Whip and Tackle, unless you want to try to stall people out with Poison Powder, um, but you're going to take damage and this is why you have to go back and heal so ever since, you know Vine or uh, Bulbasaur, you, you, you we've had to be in a situation where we have to go back and heal consistently, so um, like I said, Nugget Bridge is easy and even when we get to the end of the bridge pretty easy fight here I really wish they just let you join. If it was like a real like MMO, like you can decide whether you wanted to join Team Rocket or not, it'd be pretty cool. Um, pretty cool option. <laughs> uh, but uh, I actually like beating Team Rocket. But I just think it, to have the option would be pretty cool and just like a different storyline you can try. So Thrash, is, I've learned that well, this is later on the, in the after I've had Thrash for a while. Thrash is good if the other Pokemon only trainer only has like two or three Pokemon. That's where Thrash is good. Is that they have only a couple Pokemon, and you don't have to worry about uh, getting confused. It's it's hopefully you can just knock them out, which most of the time you do. Um, Mega Punch, two hit knockout, and the next two should be uh, next one should be a one hit, and the one after that should also be a one hit. And now we're facing this girl, and she has Nidoran male, so us. Thrash, and then the next Pokemon, I believe it's an Oddish. No, Nidoran, Nidoran female. So get the knockout there. And then one of the main ones right now that we always fight that are always issue. So rock type is always an issue in Gen 1. Because not a lot of rock type, but the ones you come across can really be, uh, you, you ha you're have you forced to face hikers that have rock. So we're forced to face this hiker. Now, it, it, for this Pokemon, it's not an issue. For other Pokemon, it can be. Because there's just not a lot of stuff that affect them. If you don't have a water or grass type move, you don't have an effective move at all. Unless you're just high leveled or you can't be hurt by them, so on and so forth. 
So now we're taking on this trainer. We are gra we are ground poison right now, which is a very double edged sword against grass type. Um, but this is an easy trainer. We get the win against this trainer, not a problem at all. We move on, and now we're facing Misty again with a slightly higher level. So the question is, do we outspeed uh, Starmie? If we outspeed Starmie, we have a chance. So Star use a one hit. That's pretty uh, pretty straightforward. Thrash one hit knockout. Very good. Starmie, we we win the um, speed battle, and she did half health. So if we'd have missed, we would have lost that battle. So that that was concerning to me because considering Nidoran female, we came right out of the tunnel and went right for the battle and beat her. So a um, little bit concerned. So I thought maybe there's gonna be something that held us up. So we beat the Pidgey. We hit the Pidgey right here. And second Pidgey and third Pidgey. Knock out the third Pidgey. Very good. And we beat this trainer here. He's not very tough either. The, the, the girl with the three Pidgeys is tough because they can, she can sand attack. If that first Pokemon gets off a of sand attack, it can really screw up your world. And then every Pokemon after that has the same moveset, like sand attack and stuff like that. So, so now we're fighting. This is, so this is a, a move we need with this trainer this Pokemon. Um, I mean, I guess you don't need it. The ones we have are good. Um, but we didn't get it as a level up move with Nidoran male like we did with Nidoran female. Um, as soon as we evolved Nido Queen, we got that move. So now we're fighting our next rival fight. So this rival fight is pretty trivial. And Body Slam should... Uh, why do we go for Bubble Beam? So now the, the Dirty Bird Pidgeotto gets off a damn sand attack. <coughs> Eradicate. Eradicate, eradicate, ooh, eradicate, eradicate. Get eradicate knocked out. Alakazam. We there's only two Pokemon left, so I thought going for Thrash would be useful. As long as there's no super effective moves or, or we miss, that's great. And we miss again. And now these battles are becoming a lot more uh, interesting than they really need to be. If it wasn't for super sand attack and dumb misses and stuff like that. So now we're fighting Lieutenant Surge. Lieutenant Surge is not difficult. He's not difficult. We're ground type. Um, we don't have dig or anything, but he can't really ha affect us. Um, he has electric type, and then like maybe mega punch. I don't even think me he. I don't think Raichu has mega punch in, in this game. I think in Pokemon Yellow he has mega punch to counter if you have a ground type and he can't attack you. Um, but in in general, in, in Pokemon Blue, he just has electric moves and like maybe like tackle or something like that or growl. Um, so we're at level 32, and we're progressing pretty well. So look at the time. This is what I want to bring everyone's attention to. We're at 34 minutes. So we're going to showcase just a little bit of the tunnel um, after this trainer right here. Um, actually, after the next train after this one, we're going to showcase a little bit of the tunnel, not much. There's not much that goes on in the tunnel that's very uh, important. What really matters is this one trainer you have, you have to fight, and that's the hiker that has three exploding Pokemon. So it can be uh, a, a tough battle if, if your Pokemon either A, can't knock them out first, or B, your Pokemon has to tank three exploding Pokemon attacks. Or if you can use Dig and avoid one of them at least. So, get through this trainer, and now we're in here, and we're fighting, we're, we're fighting the two hikers in here. We have Bubble Beam, so these fights are not very hard. I just like to showcase how we, have, how we get through them very easily. Because there are playthroughs in the future that I'm going to do, where we're not going to get through them that easy. It's not going to be a, a walk in the park or cakewalk or nothing like that. It's not going to be an easy playthrough. So now we have three um, three Pokemon. Knock them out. Don't even give them a chance to explode. Knock them out. Water gun or uh, bubble beam, bubble beam, bubble beam. You always got to feel a little bit bad for these trainers too. Because they're in here and then you get your Pokemon knocked out. There's wild Pokemon everywhere. So I feel bad for these people. So now we're going, we went right to er, uh, Erica's gym. Uh, right, went right for Erica's gym. And we, we actually do well against Erica's gym up to a point. Um, so up to a point, we do well against Erica's gym. And that point really is uh, once we get to Erica, her Pokemon are a little bit. We're not as tanky as Nidoqueen was. And our and uh, we're just not as high level as Nidoqueen was, so we're not quite there yet. We're not Ice type. So we have um, Ice Beam, which is good to have right now. Okay? Ice Beam's good to have. Um, and I Ice Beam's good to have. You can, it's, it's definitely like a one-hit knockout uh, capability. 
Um, but here's the thing about it. It's just, it's not the same type of attack bonus. So we don't get any boost in attack. And that's one of the kind of the downsides to Nido King. You don't get a lot of moves. Other than like Earthquake later, it's a ground move. Um, you don't get a lot of moves that are like same type attack bonus other than like Earthquake. Everything you can learn a lot, but that doesn't exactly give you the ability to, um, doesn't that give you any kind of, like, you can learn a lot of moves, but if they're not super effective or anything, it can, it can cost you. That's kind of the... There's another Pokemon I play through as later. Um, not in this playthrough, obviously, but other playthroughs that can learn a lot of moves, but they're not a lot same type attack bonus or anything like that. So that's kind of the trade-off there. And now we're fighting Erica. So you're gonna, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm being more transparent with some of these missed battles I had, or some losses, I should say. So we're gonna do Ice Beam. It's not a one-hit knockout. Razor Leaf doesn't knock me out, but it doesn't give me a lot of, uh, gives me concern because Tangela's got a better um, defense than Nido or uh, Victory Bell. So now I put to sleep, and now it's just gonna whittle down our health. If it wasn't for being put to sleep, I think it could have had this battle won, but that is the one trade-off we had. It was we had to take this damage, and we had to reset this battle, go back. We're going to fight her again. We're going to take another shot at it, but if we don't win this one, it's not. Well, I'm not going to keep doing it and keep losing, and we're just going to move on to the next part of the game and, and double back. If I would have just gone for a rocket hideout first, I probably would have got this done without any uh, hiccups and not wasting a minute or two. Ice Beam knocks him out, Vile Plume. So we're at 35 health. We're gonna get knocked out again. Yep, because we get put to sleep. We probably would have won, we wouldn't got knocked out, but it is what it is. So I'm not going to make, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, make a big deal out of it. I'm just gonna go fight Team Rocket, get the extra experience points I need, and then we'll we'll, bat, we'll double back after Pokemon Tower and get that. So that's why I like I like the running clock, is because you gotta make that decision. You gotta be decisive. Um, you can't take five six seven tries to get a battle done unless obviously it might be the lead four you don't have a choice that's the only way to win the game you got to finish it off um so that's why i like having a running clock it makes me make a decision like okay we just gotta we gotta get this done and move on it's not something we're gonna sit here and fight with all day if we do the clock is running we're gonna eat up a lot of clock and that's not fair to the pokemon and and uh so we'll just move right on so now we're in, in rocket hideout now we gotta fight tweedledee and tweedledum so, if you've never seen my videos before, the, that, that is what I've nicknamed these two, Tweedledee and Tweedledum. They are basically the uh, uh, Giovanni's guards, and I've just called them Tweedledee and Tweedledum because it's, it's the only place where you really have like, just two people you got to fight. And they pretty much have the same Pokemon. They both have an, uh, an Ekans and a Sandshrew, and one has the evolved version of Ekans, which is Arbok. One has the evolved versions of, of Sandshrew, which is Sandslash. But either way, neither one of them is really too difficult. And Arbok, and it's a knockout. So, and yeah, we haven't like we haven't like cut away. So after I lost Erica, I didn't go back and heal because I just went back and lost save point. Went straight from Erica to Team Rocket, Rocket Hideout. Um, I have not gone back to heal since I since I've been here. So Bubble Beam's a one hit knockout for Giovanni. Uh, his Ekans, it's one hit knockout for Rhyhorn. And then Kangaskhan's not very difficult. We're going to do Ice Beam. It's a two-hit. Bite does a little bit of damage. But we're going to dig right out of here. And I'm not going to cut I don't cut away from this. This is starting to be something. It's a trend. It's going to be a trend I'm going to start doing to save time. And really, it's, it's not that much time you're saving. It's really just... It's just cool that there's some Pokemon that are just this powerful, this strong, or whatever. That they can just transition right into the next part of the game pretty well. So I don't even heal. I go right for my rival. But I do, I do give myself a potion or two. Right, that'll work we have plenty of power points for our moves to take this guy out so I'm not too worried about it we heal really quick and now we're facing off against our, our uh, that'd be our fifth rival fight because we do the optional one every every time we do the optional one ice beams a one-hit knockout for Pidgeotto Growlithe it's a one-hit knockout as well execute should be a one-hit knockout okay sometimes executes uh, defense is a little bit higher than anticipated so Thrash is a one-hit knockout for Abra, or Kadabra, and then War Turtle is a two-hit knockout. So, Seam rolling through his, I'm not going to show you the rest of Pokemon Tower. Those things aren't important. However, uh, Pokemon Tower is very dangerous because Ghastly 
does have a decent effect on you. So now I'm going to face Erica again. I am a couple levels higher than I was before. So we'll see how much this is helping our battle. So here we go. Erica. So victory bell. We're going to use bubble beam. Or I, I, I ice beam. So it's not a two hit anymore. That's good. Tangela is not a two hit anymore. Tangela is Vile Plume a one hit. No, it is a two hit. If it put us to sleep there, might have been an issue, but not. So we beat Erica, and now we're moving on to the next part. Koga's Gym. What we had to go back to, um, so for Koga's Gym, we had to go, we didn't exactly have any great moves, so we decided to go get an Earthquake. Um, so while we were there, I was like, you know what, I'm way ahead of schedule when it came to um, Knitter and Female, and way ahead of schedule when it came to um, also sand slashes in the two most recent playthroughs. So let me go get a couple extra experience points here and fight these this uh, the this dojo or whatever it's called It's a karate gym or whatever you want to call it So let me just go get some, some extra experience points here. I already got to go get earthquake anyway So let's go ahead and do that. So I opted to get earthquake I didn't opt to try to beat Koga with the moves that I have none of them are super effective against this gym anyway So I think ice beam might have a little bit of an effect um but I think I go get Earthquake, and that's the strategy I'm going with. So um, these are just this is, these are just usually just very easy battles. I can just get experience from. That's what the point of this is. So I was already in the city to go get Earthquake anyway. So I decided to go here, um, get a couple extra experience points, and then after I get this, I'm gonna go fight, and then I'm gonna go get Earthquake. I'm not fighting Silthco yet. Um, I still need to get uh, I still need to beat Koga's gym before I do that. Um, I probably could fight my rival here, but I, just, I like to go in order of getting um, Surf first because once you beat your rival, you get Lapras. And I like to have Lapras to Surf. Um, that's kind of the way I like to do things. There might be a, come a time in the future where I have to get a different Pokemon to Surf with. Maybe with a different Water type or something like that. So now we're facing the leader of the dojo, if this ever goes. There we go. So now uh, we're facing the leader of the dojo. A couple uh, potions just to make sure I got enough uh, health to tank anything he sends my way. Um, I'm pretty sure Hitmonchan has a higher defense, so Hitmonchan I think is a, a two hit, where I think Hitmonlee is a one hit. Hitmonlee, or maybe it's the other way around. So Thrash, it's a two hit knockout. Hitmonchan is also a two hit knockout, and then Thrash does sometimes Thrash only does three, and then you get confused. But this time it did four. Very good. So I don't even take the Pokemon and try to give me. So I think I have Earthquake now. So let me just double check. And yep, I got Earthquake. So we got rid of Bubble Beam. Um, we don't really need Bubble Beam anymore. We're not fighting a lot of Rock type. And if Hypno, Hypno is scary. For the life of me, I do not know why Air, or, uh, Sabrina does not use Hypno. I think Hypno, that is a big undersight on her. Uh, Hypno is a very strong Pokemon. Um, not one of my favorites personally, but just very powerful Psychic type. I can't wait to do my Drowsy playthrough because Drowsy and Hypno are going to be two tough Pokemon that are going to be. We're going to put up a very solid time, to say the least. So, um, so now we're just fighting um, all the trainers in Koga's gym, and uh, like I said, Koga is not difficult, and his gym isn't difficult. Really, his trainers are more difficult than he is. Um, and they got some weird Pokemon like Sand Slash doesn't. It yeah, does Poison Sting, I guess. That, I guess that makes sense. Um, but yeah, we almost lose this battle right here. We just take him one more attack. He does poison sting, thank goodness. One more attack. So we have to go out and heal. And we actually show this, don't we? Yeah. Uh, we go out and heal. Get full health. Go back in there. I don't think we have to come back out to heal when we fight the last two battles. So I'll, I haven't done this yet. So um, do my social uh, plug. Uh, my Twitter account is at JD's Nerdverse. Um... Follow me on there. You get videos like this all the time. I, I post stuff about movies. I'm interactive with uh, other YouTube channel or other Twitter handles about like YouTube videos and like video ranking stuff like that. Um, and uh, we're fighting Coco now. And my Instagram is JD's underscore not underscore verse. You'll, you'll get notifications when I post all the time on there. And also subscribe on here. But now let's face Koga. Koga gets nerfed because we have Earthquake. Um, I really wanted to try to beat this without Earthquake, but that Hypno was giving me issues. So I'm like, you know what? Let's just go get Ur Earthquake. We have the time. We can fight these other trainers, this other, this uh, that dojo while we're there. We didn't actually fight that dojo with Nidoqueen. 
So Nidda Queen, we didn't take the extra two minutes to fight that dojo. We didn't need to. Uh, we were already over leveled at that point, so we didn't have to. So now we're fighting our rival. Now, a rival can be tricky. Can be. Um, I quote that. Uh, can be tricky here if you don't have the right moves. So, we have Pidgeot. And I, no, I did not teach you yet. But Ice Beam is a two-hit knockout with Pidgeot. Pidgeot. So then we have Growlithe. Ice Beam is a knockout with Gra a two-hit knockout with Growlithe. I just got Electric uh, Thunder or uh, Thunderbolt. That would have been fine with the first one. It would have been a one-hit knockout. Execute. Ice Beam is a one-hit knockout. Now we have Kadabra, or Alakazam, actually. Earthquake with Alakazam, it's a one-hit knockout. And then Blastoise, the final Pokemon here. Ice Beam doesn't do nothing. I got lucky there. He probably could have started using like uh, Hydro Pump or something. And then uh, Bubble does nothing, so we get the win. Because uh, in, in this game, I actually called him Mary instead of Larry or Gary. Because, you know, when we had Villain and Female, we were facing, uh, you know, the, the male aspect, Larry. And in Nidor and Male, we're facing the female, Mary. So that's why I named our rival Mary. So we're, it's uh, countering it. So one hit knockout for Nidorino. Uh, it's a two hit knockout for Kangaskhan. I'm actually excited to play through this Kangaskhan. He's got good stats. Um, the question is, I haven't looked at his move, move pool yet. Maybe I'll lose my excitement the second I see his move pool. Earthquake, is it a one hit for Nidoqueen? Queen? That it is. And we get the victory against Giovanni. So then we move on to Blaine. Blaine is not difficult. He has no advantage against us. Um, at all. So I've yet to come across a, a battle, except for maybe Venusaur, where Blaine is actually tricky. Um, so Earthquake, one hit knockout, very good. Nitto King, one hit, or I'm sorry, uh, Ponytail, one hit knockout, very good. So that's two one hit knockouts. Is it three? Let's make it three one hit knockouts. And four, RK9 it is a one hit knockout. So four one hit knockouts. Um, take it through Blaine. So those last couple battles, I'm not taking that much damage. So now I'm going to go face Sabrina and her whip. And I'm waiting. I'm waiting. There we go. Sabrina and her whip. You really should get hypno, Sabrina. Kadabra. Is it a one hit? It's a one hit. Knock it out. Good. Mr. Mime. Is it a one hit? Knock it out. Very good. Venomoth, which doesn't make sense that he, Earthquake hits it because it's flying, but whatever. And then Alakazam, it's a one-hit knockout. So basically, we just swept two uh, uh, gym leaders without taking any damage. And I'm almost confident we can do this, something similar here with Giovanni. And Giovanni's got that Widow's Peak, doesn't he? Ice Beam, one-hit knockout, very good. Doug Trio, one-hit knockout, very good. Nitto Queen. Earthquake, one hit knockout, very good. Nitto King, should be a one hit. Yeah, one hit knockout. And then the last one, right on. One hit knockout now with, ooh, so close. With Nitto Queen, a lot of those weren't one hit knockouts. So that's kind of the benefit of having a higher attack. So now we face our rival. We use all the rare candies, except for like three. I don't know why I just didn't use them all. Because we, the reason why I don't use them all is sometimes, I'll explain that afterwards. Earthquake. Um, actually, I'll pause it and just do it. So, I'll just pause it. Is it paused? Okay, good. Um, so, Nitto, uh, what I do as a tactic is I give a rare can. I save three rare candies so that when I'm fighting the Elite Four, I'll give it to them right before the battle so they don't level up in the middle of the battle. Now, here's the here's what that's for. The reason why I do that is because if I'm using the badge boost glitch, when you level up, it undoes the badge boost to all your stats and only works on the stat you're trying to change. So that's the point of doing that. Now, with Nitto King and Nitto Queen, I don't have to do that because they don't have any badge boosting moves. So now I have Blizzard and Thunderbolt taught. So Blizzard's a one hit. Growlithe, uh, Earthquake's a one hit. Execute is a one hit. Alakazam is a one hit. And I, is Blastoise a one hit with Thunderbolt? It is a one hit with Thunderbolt. Perfect. So now. We are moving on to the Elite Four, and you're gonna see a playthrough. Now, I screwed up here, and uh, I didn't screw up. This doesn't affect the run at all, but I did screw up here. Um, I did not buy any full heals. I did have my elixirs on me, luckily, but I did not buy any full heals. So Thunderbolt's a two-hit knockout for Dugong. Cloyster, it's a one-hit. Higher attack is beneficial. Slowbro 
It's a two hit, so if it doesn't do anything, it, it spans. The reason why, hold on, I'm gonna explain why. Um, Slowbro continuously will use am, uh, um, amnesia. I am poison type, so the game views me as they have like a psychic type is, is apparently effective, more effective against poison than than o the other moves it has. So it's spamming amnesia because it's a psychic type, but doesn't realize it doesn't do any damage to me. One hit knockout with Jinx, yes it is, and then the very last Pokemon, Lapras. Earthquake is a two hit. Hydro Pump probably wouldn't knock this out, so it's not a big deal that it missed. I kind of am curious though, but I'm not going to go back and do it. So this is when I'm look, I'm, I'm, I click here, item, and I'm looking through, looking for a full heal, and I realize I don't have any full heals. I have one full restore, and that's it. One. The rest of them, I have to use potions. And that's when I realized, do I really want to go back, or do I want to just keep going? So I decided to keep going, see if I can get through. I still have my elixirs and my ethers, so that's fine. But I was very worried right here. And I also didn't do my, uh, I, I get two PP ups, I didn't use those either. So I didn't boost the amount of blizzard that I have, so I got to go with what I got. So if I miss one, I might not, it, for, you know, Pokemon that needs, or... That, uh, for a trainer, like like for example, Lance, you might need all the blizzards to beat him because you might miss one. Um, so yeah, that was the risk I was taking. But like, you know what? We're pacing so well. I'm gonna take this chance. Worst case scenario, I gotta redo it, and we're probably still gonna beat our best time so far. So we beat the ever living hell out of Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno, but we beat the crap out of him. Um, he's basically a glorified hiker. Okay, so elixir. We're gonna give him the elixir. And like I said, luckily we had a couple potions on us. And I use a hyper potion, it doesn't matter. Um, we don't take a lot of damage in any of these battles anyway. So now we're facing um, Agatha. And again, we have the J Rose coined Agatha Lottery, which uh, makes complete sense to me. I'm fighting through Agatha with other Pokemon that can't one shot anything, and it is a struggle to say the least. Earthquake should be a one hit knockout for everything except for Golbat. Golbat, um, Blizzard, it's a flying type Pokemon. So it's a one hit, but uh, Earthquake can't hit it, so we have to use uh, um, Blizzard. It's a one hit knockout for everything. Now we're at the last Pokemon to Gengar. The higher level Gengar is it a one hit. It is a one hit, and we, and we outspeed. Very good. Excellent. Now we're moving on. We're moving on to the very last two trainers in the game. So these are the two best trainers in the game, technically, supposed to be. So now, uh, like I said, I don't have any potions other than the super I don't have a full restore so I use what I got and I give the last two rare candies that I have to Nitto King just to give a little bit extra ump in this battle and like I said I got nothing else to give I, I had a couple I could have given a, a, a super potion there which is what I just realized is I do have a super potion I can give give a little bit extra um, So now we decide we're just going to take on Lance. We act, I think we have a little bit less health than full health. Like a smidge under full health. But I'm actually very confident because one, Thunderbolt's going to be a one hit. Knockout. And as long as we don't get outsped by Aerodactyl, we're going to one shot everything. Or we miss an attack, I guess. One shot on Dratini. Or Dragonair. Two shot, one shot on Dragonair. Aerodactyl is a one shot oh not quite a knockout but hyper beam does not do that much damage to me it's a two hit knockout so now we just have one pokemon left which a blizzard should knock it out in one hit very good we are on to the champion we are at one hour and 26 minutes the fastest time by far we've ever done the closest one to this was has been charizard nitto queen blastoise and sand slash at about an hour and 40 minutes and like I said, a couple of them are earlier ones. I could probably shave about 10 minutes off and get it close to this. Um, so we fully restore everything. We use an elixir so all of our moves are prepared. So here we go. And that's when I, I was looking for the PP up so I can give it to for Blizzard. That's why I was looking through it. Now I remember why. So now we're facing our rival, uh, Mary, the final rival battle, the champion. Let's see how we do. Thunderbolt is a one. Oh, it's not a one hit. Why is that not a one hit? I don't understand that. Um, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. But we get the knockout. I'm not going to complain. So now we outspeed Alakazam. Earthquake. It's a one-hit knockout. Very good. Next Pokemon we have should be Execute. Oh, no. It's right on. Right on. We use Blizzard. Blizzard's a one-hit knockout. Very good. 
R canine is Earthquake. Is it a one hit? It is a one hit. Executor. Blizzard should be a one hit, but it's not. It's not. Uh, I guess Executor has some very good uh, defense stats. I've never looked at the stats, so I don't know the answer to that question really. Thunderbolt is a two hit, and we paralyze. Hydro Pump. Look how much Hydro Pump did. If, if, if I miss, that could be very dangerous. But we get the knockout and we get the win. And I'm spamming A. I'm spamming A to give a ride on the best time possible. Or I, uh, not ride on. A Nitto, Nitto King the best time possible. So I'm, I'm spamming A as fast as possible. I'm spamming. I'm spamming it. Just trying to get there. I want to get us under an, uh, 1 hour and 28 minutes. And right at 1 hour and 28 minutes is what we get. Uh, yep, I did it right at 1 hour and 28 minutes. So, right, there's a, okay, so I never actually mentioned this in this video yet. Um, this is the Pokemon that a lot of speedrunners use to play through the game and beat the game. I think the record right now is like 48 minutes or something. And right, right, or Nitto King is the Pokemon people use. Because of his move set, his speed's good, his attack is good, and the the broad move set that he has um, really does let us progress through the game very fast. This is the fastest time by far. Um, I only have one other Pokemon I think might actually be on par with this Pokemon, um, which I may talk about in the video about like my upcoming stuff I'm gonna do. Um, but that this playthrough is very, very, very good, very eye-opening. Um, also. I hope everyone likes the new layout. Uh, I'm probably going to tweak it just a little bit more to see if I can get a little more uh, crisp. But uh, let me know what you all think um, about everything, about the playthrough, about the layout, about everything. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all that good jazz. And I want to thank everyone for watching. This has been JD's Nerdverse, and you have a good one. See you.